pretty. Okay, today we're going to be demonstrating additional views for the cervical spine. Uh, the routine views for cervical was AP, uh, lateral, and both obliques. Well, a continuation of that is uh, an odontoid if there's an injury we need to do. And if we cannot see uh, C7, then we need to do uh, a swimmer's view. And then again, we're also going to show you flexion extension views of the spine today. So first off, we're going to put our shield on the patient. Okay. And first thing I'm going to demonstrate is going to be the flexion and extension. Our flexion and extension uh, x-rays are done for a range of motion. Someone who post-operatively post had surgery, uh, things like that, and the physician wants to see what kind of range of motion they may have. So what's important when you do the flexion and extension x-rays is, is that you do need to include when you annotate on the film which was flexion, which was extension, and which was the neutral view. So we're going to have the patient turn, put their side against there, which means I do need to turn the shield to the side. Okay. Uh, real world, this patient here would not have their necklace on. We're going to use a 72 inch SID, which helps us to reduce that magnification be between the uh, IR and the neck here, which the shoulder, of course, is causing the increased OID. Uh, 72 inch SID, the technical factors will be 77 to 81. Okay, we're going to center up here. Just like the lateral, which that will be considered our neutral, so you do need to do a, a lateral view for this. Uh, we're going to center so that the patient, the center will come down right behind the ear uh, at the level of the mastoid. And we're going to collimate to the IR borders up and down. And side to side, we want to get to the skin margins. And I'm going to put my marker in the light field, but it will not be obstructing. Again, we want to have the patient to uh, relax their shoulders down as much as they possibly can. And again, that would be our neutral view, okay? Same as we do for a lateral cervical. Now, the next view we're going to do is going to be flexion. The patient is going to be standing in the same position. We'll change our film. We're going to have the patient to take in standing in this position to bring their head toward their chest or their chin toward their chest as best they can. Okay, so then we're going to just make an adjustment that we're actually staying centered to the neck as much as we can. Our marker placement will definitely be in the front because that's actually helping us to determine that is a flexion view and I'll explain that more here in just a second. So the patient is going to have his neck uh, hyperflexed forward. The technical factors will remain the same, 77 to 81 kV, center cell, uh, automatic exposure control. So uh, the film size will be 10 by 12 for all three of these views. Okay. So the collimation will be uh, maybe a little bit wider because we do need to see where the neck is actually uh, hyperflexed there. We need to make sure that we're seeing all the neck. So the collimation will get extended a little bit more than we normally do. So this is our uh, flexion view. And again, you do need to annotate this on the film. Then we're gonna have the patient just to stand back up put their head up straight. Now I'm just holding on to them, trying to keep them positioned right where they are. The next thing we want to do is have the patient to uh, extend. So they're going to actually bring their head back as far as they can. So we're actually going to then have to bring the patient forward just a little bit so that we can actually get it centered back up to our film. We're going to move the marker now to the back. There is light here in the back and we're going to take and put it there. And the reason we're doing that is that's an indication or a tell for me that when I look at this film, this was the extension view. Because even though he's able to extend his neck quite a bit, a lot of patients cannot. So it's very difficult to tell between flexion, extension, and neutral. So we need to use some type of marker placement that will tell us which is which. And so that's why we move the marker to the back. Again, we're centered still up to our film. The centering is still going to be behind the ear here and just centered to the patient. Film size is still 10 by 12. The technical factors remain the same, 77 to 81 kV. And again, this is our flexion extension views. Next thing I'm going to show you here, you can relax, is I'm going to have uh, do a swimmer's view. Now the swimmer's view is done on a patient. Uh, we've done a cervical on, and on the lateral we only were able to see, say, through C6. Okay, well, we need to see C7 and actually the transition into T1. So what we're going to have to do now is a swimmer's view. And it's very similar to the positioning uh, for a dorsal. Uh, the, it's going to look, the patient looks like they're swimming. 
The film size will be a 10 by 12. It's going to be lengthwise. Uh, the technical factors will be, I'll give you a couple different ones, uh, 96 kV plus 3 density, or you can also use about 77 kV at a 250 mass. Okay, uh, Either or, uh, whichever works best for you, I tend to like the 96 plus 3 because it seems like it works better for me. So the patient's going to have, a, a, again, their side against the board. The, uh, the arm that is closest to the board is going to get raised up. Okay, then we're going to bring the patient in as close as we can, having them relax this shoulder down. We're trying to actually shoot between the shoulders. That's why you're raising one and lowering the other. Our distance is going to be, uh, is going to be actually a 40 inch SID. So we, on a ladder we may move it in. Uh, as far as where your centering goes, the centering is you can actually palpate the vertebral prominence, which is C7, and our centering is going to be about the level of T1, so actually a little bit below that level. But you can also palpate the jugular notch, and it's just about the it's just a little lower than the jugular notch. Okay, our collimation will be a little bit tighter because we're only interested in uh, C7 T1 area. Okay, mark replacement can be to the front or to the back, where you have more light. I have a uh, light there on the back, making sure here that we are centered to our film. Okay, and now again the patient is relaxing the arm down and our, again our technical factor is 96 plus 3, 77 at 250 and then we would make exposure here and this is going to demonstrate C7 and T1, the transition there uh, between, between the two vertebrae. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to show you is you're going to relax your arm down. You're going to have you turn and put your back against there. Okay, we're going to do an odontoid view. Now, but what we need to make sure that we turn the shield to the front. Okay, and then one of the, we want to use a 10 by 12 lengthwise. Now, the technical factors are going to go down a little bit here. It's going to be about 55 to, uh, 52 to 55 kV uh, center cell automatic exposure control. And so we're going to position the patient because uh, we're trying to see on this C, uh, C1 uh, and C2. So what I want to try to do is I want to get the occlusal plane, which is an imaginary line uh, between the chewing surface of the teeth, the mastoid tip, and the base of the skull, trying to get those perpendicular to the IR. Okay, when, when the mouth is open. So we're going to have the patient to open their mouth. Okay. <laughs> And I can already see one issue here we're going to have to do is this patient is tall, so we're actually going to have to use a chair. Have you stand out and have you sit for me? Go ahead and this while I'm over here. Okay, so. So what we're going to do now is again, we're going to have the head back, we're going to have the occlusal plane, open your mouth for me, an imaginary line between the, the base, the chewing surface, the mastoid tip, the base of the skull, so that it is perpendicular to the IR. Okay. Then we're going to take a center to the open mouth. Now your collimation is going to be sort of tight, about a four by four. Now you do have a little light, we can put the marker here, on there, we are center to our film, we are center to our film there, uh, which again is a 10 by 12. Now in this position here, if we make the, uh, uh, when we make the exposure here and we see that the base of the skull may be obstructing, what we can do to correct that will be actually to hyper uh, flex the neck forward and that will actually bring the base of the skull forward and helps us to see the odontoid better. If the teeth are obstructing then what we want to do is we want to actually extend back and then that will get the, uh, the teeth out of the way. We're trying to shoot between the base of the skull and the teeth. Again we're looking at the C1 and C2. This is the odontoid view of the cervical. Okay. 